there it is. I knew I wasn't crazy. There is a freaking demon in that window, and now I have the evidence. Before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Spooky season is a us. However, here on Esoteric Atlanta, it's always spooky season. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, such a great big thank you to all of our patrons and our producers here on Esoteric Atlanta. Without you guys, this channel would absolutely not be possible. If you would like to help support Esoteric Atlanta, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today we're going to be talking about the Kennesaw House Conspiracy. Now, before we get into the episode today, I just want to play a quick commercial from one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV, regarding specifically our panel over occult survivors. If you are somebody who is interested in the occult, then this panel is exactly what you need. So just hold on for one second as we hear from our sponsors. One of our awesome sponsors here on Esoteric Atlanta is Gnostic TV. As many of you know, I am also a content creator for Gnostic TV. I have two series, the Esoteric Explorer series, along with Esoteric Health and Wellness. Over on the Esoteric Explorer series, you can join me for deep dives in to the weird and wacky and folklore exclusive folklore stories that are only found over on Gnostic TV. You could also join me over on the health and wellness series where we go into the spiritual and esoteric implications of exercise and health. But we also have a brand new panel over on Gnostic TV called Tales of Survival of the Dark Side. This is for people who are particularly interested in the occult. On this panel, we have a ton of people who are speaking about their experiences growing up in occult families. Now, because of the nature of this conversation, obviously it has to be on a separate platform, which is why we're doing this over on Gnostic TV. If you would like to specifically watch the panel of occult survivors, there is a link to ticket sales down in the description box below. Once you buy your ticket, your ticket is good for forever. You can always Always come back and rewatch or continue to watch the stories of these people who have survived these particular satanic families. Now, as always, a percentage of the ticket sales go does go to support these whistleblowers. So please know that your money is going to a really great cause. Otherwise, you're welcome to watch the Esoteric Explorer series and the Esoteric Health and Wellness series exclusively on Gnostic TV. Marietta, Georgia lies 20 miles northwest of Atlanta, Georgia. It is the county seat of Cobb County, and legend has it that it was named after Mary Cobb, wife of the U.S. Senator and Superior Court Judge Thomas Willis Cobb. 
According to our history, European settlement started around the Marietta area around 1824. Now, this was the area of the Cherokee, and as I've spoken about in many other videos, the Cherokee Nation and the European settlers had a very special relationship. Out of a lot of the Native American tribes, the Cherokees were the most welcoming to the Europeans, quickly intermingling with the European society, intermarrying with the Europeans, and starting to attend European schools. If you're part of Gnostic TV, you know that in the past, I've done an episode on the Moon Eye people. And in that episode, we spoke about how the Cherokee specifically were very, very familiar with white people because they were aware of white tribes that already existed in the Americas. So a lot of our culture here in Northwest Georgia is very, very much intermingled with the Cherokee Nation. On December 19th, 1834, the Georgia General Assembly legally recognized Marietta as a proper town. Now, like most old Southern towns, Marietta was built around a courthouse. This courthouse now is the centerpiece of what is called Marietta Square, one of the most famous locations in Northwest Georgia. Marietta Square still hosts a lot of very old buildings and definitely has a lot of folklore and legend regarding these buildings. Marietta, Georgia existed long before the city of Atlanta, Georgia, existed. And as Marietta was at one point its own town, now it is considered one of the biggest suburbs in the metro Atlanta area. Only a few years after Marietta was founded as a town, the state assembly approved a bill creating the Western and Atlantic Railroad. Now, it doesn't take a genius to know that the railroad brought a lot of commerce to different areas of the world. Before it was the railroad, it was rivers where big ships would be able to go down the highway of water to bring to certain locations. And once the railroads popped up, all of a sudden industry was booming. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers decided to make Marietta the home base for this expansion of the railroad. As soon as more and more and more men moved into the area to expand upon the railroad, we started seeing things like taverns pop up in the area. Inns, all sorts of businesses started to line the streets of the Marietta Square. And right in the heart of the Marietta Square is a building called the Kennesaw House. Now, currently, this is the Marietta Historical Society. It's now currently a museum. And this particular building, this old building that's been around since Marietta was birthed, is home to more than, allegedly, to more than 700 ghosts and maybe a few demons. This building has seen the history of Marietta pass it by, the treachery, the deceit, and of course, the scandals. This building was originally built in 1845 by a man named John Glover. Now, John Glover was a businessman. He was a cotton farmer from South Carolina. And because of the railroad and because of Marietta's position in the geography of the United States, he decided to move his family from South Carolina to Marietta for business. So this building was originally a warehouse for cotton. Because of the building's proximity to the railroad, I mean, it's literally just a few feet away, the cotton could be easily stored and then shipped out when it was purchased from other manufacturers. Now, in 1852, John Glover would be elected the mayor of Marietta. At this point, because of the amount of travelers that were coming through this town, he did designate part of his warehouse to be a restaurant to service all the passengers that were starting to come through the city. It wasn't just commerce at this point that was being shipped all over the United States, but now people were using trains to get around the United States. And in 1855, Mayor John Glover sold his warehouse to a man named Dix Fletcher. Now, Dix Fletcher is kind of the crux of our story because this joker, you guys, Dix Fletcher was a Yankee. And for those who are not from the United States, I know I have a lot of international viewers here. I know you guys over in Europe like to call Americans Yanks. But here in the United States, Yanks or Yankees 
are, are referred to a specific demographic, a specific geographical demographic of people, people who are from New England, the upper part of the original 13 colonies. You see us down in the South do not consider ourselves to be Yankees. My mom's father's mother was, grew up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Yankee land. Her whole father's side of her family were Yankees. Her mother was from England, but her father's side, her father, a man named Henry Stafford, who I guess would be my great great grandfather, was a damn Yankee. And so my grandfather would never tell us any information about the Stafford family simply because they were Yankees. I always knew growing up that if I ever met somebody from Pennsylvania who had the last name Stafford, probably couldn't date them because I knew nothing about that side of the family. The pain and the hatred between the North and the South has been real for a very, very, very long time. And Dix Fletcher was a Yankee. He had come down to the South for whatever reason at a time right before on the precipice of the Civil War between the North and the South. Now, Dix Flet Fletcher might have been a Yankee, but he was also a very suave businessman. He was also a Freemason, which we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. And Dix Fletcher decided that he was going to open up this, he was going to re-renovate this whole warehouse and turn it into a five-star hotel, resort-esque hotel. Marietta at this point, and it still is, it was a very wealthy town. Like, even though they had taverns and they had some ruffians that were coming and going through the railroad. It was a very, very wealthy area of the world. Where Marietta was positioned also had this legend, which we're going to get to, had this, in another video, had this legend of having these magical drinking waters, these waters that would restore your health. So all of these people from all over the United States were coming to Marietta to seek out the fountain of youth, if you will. And again, of course, Marietta was a very wealthy community. There were beautiful homes, very, very prosperous people. So he decided Dix Fletcher was basically what we would also call a snowbird. He was, as the United States, we refer to snowbirds as Yankees, as people from the North who flocked to the South to get away from the harsh winters of the North. So our Freemason Yankee friend, Dix Fletcher, comes in to Marietta, buys this cotton warehouse, and decides he's going to turn it into this hotel backslash resort for the rich and famous for the elite because we have these water this this magical water in marietta we also are in an area of the world where there really is no winter so the people from the north can flock down here and not have to worry about the snow or the cold weather and it's also far enough from the coast from the coastal communities of the south where there was raging malaria and yellow fever. So he knew this location was going to be perfect business-wise to attract not only the wealthy people of the North, but the wealthy people of the South to come and partake of the healing springs of Marietta and stay in the top, top-notch resort. Well, again, this was 1855. So we are six years away from the American Civil War. Now, if you think about six years and what we're going through now in our own world and the years that we've been fighting our own battles six years is not it's not that long of time so a lot of people believe that dix fletcher was sent to the south from the freemasons under the guise of starting a business but really to spy to spy on the south now, again, regardless of what you think of the Civil War is neither here nor there, it happened. Again, I am questioning a lot of history at this point. But the, the, the trouble between the North and the South was that the North was, a, was full of a bunch of warehouses and manufacturing factories where the South was full of crop. So the South actually held the money of the United States, this new fledgling company. We in the South had the cotton, had the rice, had the sugar, had the tobacco, had all of the products and the produce that needed to go North to be manufactured in order to sell to other countries. 
So when the South started to get upset with the North, they decided just to be their own country. The South had ports. We had Charleston and Savannah. We have all sorts of ports where we can manufacture our own cotton and send it away to, we don't need the North. We also know that part of the Civil War had to do with slavery. Now, I will say part of the Civil War. For those who are not familiar with American history, as we are taught it, slavery was just a small fraction of the labor associated with the production of cotton. And no, slavery is never a good thing. But as you've maybe heard me say in many, many episodes, in the South, after we won our independence, if you go and look through a lot of court records in the South, from the get-go, from the minute that the United States won its independence from Great Britain, there were plantation owners who were trying to free their slaves. The only problem was is the court system would put bounties on these slaves' heads, making the plantation owner pay these bounties that the plantation owners could not afford. And so a lot of the plantation owners were stuck in a situation with slavery that they themselves were not particularly fond of, okay? So there's a lot of nuance here. There's a lot of nuance here as far as what really happened in the Civil War. But nonetheless, we have this Dix Fletcher, this Freemason from the North who has come down to this new bustling, very, very wealthy city to open up, supposedly, to open up a resort for the rich and famous. And soon the Fletcher House became one of the most famous locations in the new United States of America. On April 12th of 1861, the American Civil War started. Now, Dix Fletcher is rumored to be, again, a Union spy. And many historians will say that he wasn't the type of spy you think he might be. He was more of a lookout spy, where he had this very famous hotel down in the heart of the South, and he would literally house other Union spies. It is also stated that Dick's family, a lot of his family members, especially his nephews, were spies for the Union. So all of a sudden, the Fletcher House became this headquarter for Union troops and spies to come and get together and plan their next attack in the guise of it being a resort hotel. One of the most famous Union spies to use the Fletcher Hotel was a man named James Andrew. Now, James Andrew took part in what is called the Great locomotive chase. So Marietta itself, again, is positioned on the outskirts of what is now Atlanta and also close to Chattanooga. It's further from Chattanooga than it is from Atlanta, but it was literally the stop between these two big southern cities. And so James Andrew stayed in the Fletcher House to plan out his attack on Chattanooga, which was still a Confederate stronghold. James Andrews and his man men were able to get a hold of a passenger train going into Chattanooga. They took, they took hold of it. I have to watch what I say, but if you think of the T word, what happened in September, so they tell us the story of September 2001, you know, where people take over. That's basically what happened with this locomotive. The only problem is, is that Andrews did not plan this out appropriately. And the train lost fuel 18 miles outside of Chattanooga. At that point, Andrews and his men were all arrested and Andrew himself was then executed by the Confederate troops. In 1862, the Fletcher House became a war hospital for soldiers. And in 1864, the Fletcher House became a pivotal part of the burning of Atlanta. Now, again, regardless of what you feel or how you feel about the American Civil War, there's a lot of, again, nuance when it comes to war. And even though slavery is obviously not the right thing to do, and again, as I said, most Southerners weren't even a fan of slavery anyway, what happened with Sherman when he came through the South was nothing short of diabolical. You see, legend states that Fletcher and Sherman were Lodge brothers for the Freemasons. 
And Fletcher allowed Sherman to use the Fletcher House as like a headquarters for his troops as they were burning through Georgia. The burning of Atlanta, amongst other cities in the South, again, was nothing short of diabolical. In war, as many military men will tell you, there are codes of conduct. There are gentlemanly codes of conduct. In most cases, even in modern times, most military men, when they're on a mission in another country, really try to keep civilians out of it. And in the South, we especially try to keep women and children out of it. In the South, women and children are not to be messed with. And so as the Civil War was going on, a lot of the women had to start to take over businesses and manage their houses as their men were, be re were being recruited to war. But they were, in fact, most of the time left alone. That isn't, again, until the Union got to the South. There are many stories of Union men who busted into these plantations or these old antebellum homes that were just occupied by women and children. And they would steal all of the family silver. They would grape, we'll say, the women of the house brutally. They would unalive innocent women and children brutally. And this wasn't just one incident here and there. This was happening everywhere. The Union Army became a psychotic diabolical demonic force in the south that was out for blood for any especially innocent people like children when sherman decided to burn down atlanta he burned it down with civilians in the city sherman has no respect for me i think sherman was probably one of the most evil human beings history has ever seen if i was a descendant of sherman i would be mortified i would be embarrassed to be a descendant of him just because he headed up the union army did not make him a good guy if he were a good man he would have followed the rules of war and he would have battled the opponents who were in the war and would have been respectful to innocent women and children and human beings who had nothing to do with the war but this man was bloodthirsty this man was not happy unless he was unaliving someone or graping someone and so the fact that fletcher worked with sherman as freemason lodge brothers says a lot about the integrity of fletcher now, as Sherman was burning down Atlanta, the Fletcher House was left untouched. Now, at this point, the Fletcher House was four stories, and they say that because of all the fire going around everywhere else, embers from the fire did burn down the fourth story, and now it's only three stories. I don't know how that works specifically. Like, how does the fire just burn a top story and not the rest of the building? But nonetheless, there are people who understand how fire works scientifically more than me, and that's what they say, so we'll leave it at that. Now, after the Civil War in 1867, Fletcher reopened his hotel and named it now the Kennesaw House. I would imagine that after the Fletcher House, the re reputation of what was going on at the Fletcher House, and the diabolical measures that Fletcher took with Sherman to destroy the lives of innocent people in the South, he probably needed to rebrand just to make sure he could get people back into his business. Once again, he turned it into a booming, booming resort. And that resort destination, that famous res resort destination of the Kennesaw House stayed in business until the, well into the 20th century. In 1979, the city of Marietta decided to renovate this particular Kennesaw House. And in 1996, it became the official headquarter for the Museum of History in marietta now quoting one of the people that works here at the marietta house he said it's an old house and strange things happen in old houses the museum itself this kennesaw house is legend to have over 700 ghosts now keep in mind that the town square that's right outside of the kennesaw house 
was a place where they literally used to just drop bodies and leave them to rot during the war. So are all of these ghosts that are associated with the Kennesaw House actually from the Kennesaw House? Or can they be spirits that wandered into the Kennesaw House from other areas of the Marietta Square? Now, some of the most important ghosts that people see, one, they see a woman. And this is usually seen by children. Children will see this particular lady in like antebellum old timey dresses. Now, I'm going to reiterate that this entity is only seen by children. Now that they, they know this entity is most likely Louisa Fletcher, Dix Fletcher's wife, because there's a portrait of her still in the museum, and they, the children will point to the portrait and say, that's the woman that we saw. But nonetheless, Louisa Fletcher is one of the, the less volatile spirits in this house. Now, there's a story of a man that walks up and down the hallway. He wears a black top hat, and many people believe that this man is Dix Fletcher's nephew. Now, Dix Fletcher's nephew was a surgeon for the Union troops. Now, Dix Fletcher's nephew was also known to be quite mean. I think that's probably common for the Fletcher family, seeing that Dix himself had no problem with his old Freemason buddy Sherman brutalizing innocent people. And there's other speculations too, which we're going to get to as well. I'm saving that for the end. But this particular spirit is known to be incredibly mean and he hates women. So a lot of women there get very, um, feel very uncomfortable around the area where this spirit is tends to roam. There are stories that when people take the elevator down to the basement in the museum, that the elevator door will open and all they will see out in front of them is basically a chaotic hospital. Blood going everywhere, doctors running around, and it's not a hospital like Grey's Anatomy, like we're used to. It's definitely a hospital from a, a day of days far gone by. And as soon as they see this, people say they see this like they're walking through a time warp where they see all these people who don't see them, but they see them. And as they start to walk into it, that's when the image evaporates and they're left with the basement. Now, the fact, you guys, the fact that so many people have had this same experience is unnerving to me. And I'm, I'm, I love the, the dark and spooky and the woo-woo. I totally believe people when they tell me they've had an experience. But this particular, like this sound sounds like a show that these spirits are are putting on for these people going down the elevator and again like this is multiple people who've had this experience now this could just be like there's different types of spirits this could just there's one type of spirit that's literally like a photograph in time that could be what this is it's just there was so much energy on this one particular day during the Civil War where energy and the space just kind of took a picture of it and that might be what they're seeing. So it might not be that in an intelligent haunting, like the angry man in the hallway and Louisa Fletcher, both of these entities seem to be intelligent hauntings, like they know what they're doing. But this seems to be almost more like a photograph. But nonetheless, what a show. You pro I mean, for people to experience that, they probably think they're crazy after they've seen it, but then you hear other people experience it. And that's why I tell people all the time, if you don't believe in ghost just come spend a week in the south you'll believe in ghost after that now one of the rooms at the museum is cons considered to be the james andrews room and they've literally decked this room out to look like it would have looked when james andrews stayed here literally the night before he he was unalived for the locomotive takeover now here's something interesting that i want to share and the reason why i decided to cover the kennesaw house now again i've said this so many times on this channel i mean every, everywhere is haunted in the south it's not that big of a deal we got ghosts everywhere i don't know any southerner who's afraid of a little ghost haunting it's not that big of a deal now i teach in marietta twice a week and one of the days that I teach in Marietta, I teach a very early morning class. It starts at 6.30. So typically what I do when I teach early in the morning in Marietta is I, I live in Atlanta. So I get up, I drive the 20 miles into Marietta. I park at Sacred Garden Yoga. And it's usually like 3 o'clock in the morning when I get there. And I go for a run. I love it because it's so quiet. It's so dark. It's so peaceful. 
and I go for a run throughout Marietta Square up into some graveyards we're going to cover. I just love it. I love it. And then I come back to the shala. I change and I get ready and I teach my class. Well, over the course of me taking my run, the little path that I follow, I run around the backside of the square and then I'll run into the square. And I, I always noticed the Kennesaw House. I didn't I didn't know the story of the Kennesaw House, but I, I mean, it's Marietta. It's haunted. I knew it was haunted. Everywhere is haunted. And I would run by the Kennesaw House, and I would get this really weird, like, bad, panicky feeling. And we're going to get to that because I'm not afraid of ghosts, but there's something else about the Kennesaw House having to do with the James Andrews bedroom. Now, I would notice because if you run around the backside of the Kennesaw house, you will see a mannequin of James Andrews. There's a light shining on him. It's on the second floor and he's looking out the window. When you go into the Kennesaw house and see the bedroom, you see the mannequin against the window looking out. It's guarded off. It's just to kind of show you it's a replica of James Andrews just to kind of show you again what it would have looked like the night that he stayed there in the 1800s. So you're running down and you see this mannequin staring at you through the window and you see the light on the mannequin. That's not the freaky part. It's obviously a mannequin. And I've seen, like many Southerners, have seen my share, fair share of ghosts. I'm not freaked out by ghosts. But there's been many times where I've been running and I'll stop and I'll look in that window and it feels like there is something very sinister standing behind the mannequin. And I've stopped and looked for a while. When I say sinister, yes, we know that the ghost of Fletcher's nephew is considered to be mean and doesn't like women. But when I say sinister with this, I'm talking about non-human sinister. I'm talking about a dark, demonic entity that makes me extremely jumpy and extremely uncomfortable. Well... When I was doing my research into this, because for a while now I've wanted to cover the Kennesaw House just because I see it all the time and I'm freaked out by it. and I, I wanted to cover it for you guys. And, and then I thought, well, let's wait for Halloween because tis the season, right? Well, I was doing some research. After I studied the history of the Kennesaw House, I decided to really look into a lot of the allegations of the hauntings. And there is a psychic medium, I will tag the video down below, who goes through the Kennesaw house and she hits on a lot of stuff that people already knew. And allegedly she knew nothing about the Kennesaw house until she got there. Well, she gets to the James Andrews room and she literally does not want to go in. She doesn't want to go in. She's very upset and she gets in there and she immediately talks about there is a non-human entity in this room. There's a very sinister entity in this room. It's not human. It's de demonic. I'm paraphrasing. She also goes on to mention that she's picking up that there was a lot of um, D-R-U-G-S use. I know we can't say that word on YouTube. Uh, opiates. And there was a lot of non-consensual moving of females i can't say the t word on youtube you guys but you know what i'm meaning well like we'll say carpool you know like a lot she said a lot of women young women were moved through this house illegally there was a lot of we'll say intimacy happening that was not that was violent and non-consensual the way she kind of talked about it and the vibe that I got listening to her for, plus my own experience reminded me a lot of what we're hearing about the Diddy parties that were going on at the Fletcher house. Again, this was a top of the line hotel and resort for the rich and the famous. We know that Dix Fletcher was a high ranking Freemason. So was Sherman. We know that he was put down in this area for a particular reason. A lot of it having to do with the train station and again this is all alleged we have no actual proof of this and this happened over a hundred years ago but for me when i heard this psychic median say this the hairs on my arm stood up because again 
for almost a year now, I've been running by this particular building in the middle of the night, early morning hours, and I have a really hard time with this in this particular room that has the mannequin and the light shining on it. Now, with that being said, I am going to play a brief part of that particular video for you guys now. Again, the whole video is going to be down in the description box below. Please watch the whole video and subscribe to this person's YouTube channel if you if you like what they have have to say. <laughs> It is. There is a non oh my god. I don't know, it's freezing in here. This is this person. This is the thing. Uh, and it moves in that chair. It's not good. Um, it's not a heater, she hates it. And it doesn't want anybody in the space. It's People freezing. Pull women's hair. It will scratch you. It will talk to you, it will growl at you, it will also clear its throat in here. It will make you feel really dizzy, like I feel like I'm going to pass out and went backward. It also feels like this room, you will start to come in and turn it all up really fast. It is just, it's not what it appears to be. Yeah, it's Something really, really sad happened in this room. I actually see... Okay, I don't know if I should say it. Say it. I see multiple. Yeah, I feel like women were helping this room. And I almost feel like trafficking going on in this room. And some pretty ugly people, men, were in charge of that. I also see a lot of drugs in this room. Um, and I want to say you can go upstairs and have more sex do more stuff and it all started in here. I almost feel like this was an opening type of den for a while. So pretty uh, pretty bad stuff in these rooms. Now, in a lot of the comment sections, they talk about this psychic medium must have researched this place, blah, blah, blah. I don't think so, because again, there's no record of the malicious stuff, we'll say, that she picked up on. And even though there's no record, so a lot of people could say she was making it up, I don't think she was making it up because I felt it too. And I don't know this woman, and I had not even done research into the Kennesaw house, and I felt it. It scared me. Like, I start shaking sometimes when I'm around that, and I run very quickly away. It literally terrified me. So I believe her. I absolutely believe her. Now, again, I thought this would be a fun episode, funnish episode for Halloween season. It's also an easier episode for me to do while we're going through still the hurricane um, restoration here in the South and dealing with family in Asheville and all that kind of stuff. And so I thank you guys for your patience for us going through this while, while we're dealing with, with um, what's going on in the world for being patient with the channel. But as we leave today, I did take some video footage myself of the Kennesaw house. So we are going to exit this video with that footage. All right, you guys, it is five minutes to 4 a.m. here on Wednesday morning. I think it's what, October 15th or 16th? Not super sure. Sure, excuse me. But I'm at Sacred Garden Yoga. Here's the practice room. I have a class this morning at 6.30. Um, and typically I come here before and either practice or go for a run. We're not going to do that today. We're actually going to walk over to Kennesaw House so you guys can see. Kennesaw House once again is located in the very famous Marietta Square which is less than a mile from Sacred Garden Yoga. The path I'm taking is a walking path that was created by the city to get people to and from the square on foot. Now I'm in the middle of the square and I've left the background volume so you guys could actually hear the train 
trains come through Marietta all the time. And this is the exact same train tracks that were produced during the story of the building of the Kennesaw House. I mean, the, the train track is the whole reason why the Kennesaw House was built to begin with. Okay, so now we're coming up to the main attraction, the Kennesaw House. As you can see, the Marietta Welcome Center. And I am now behind the square. I walked behind back to the path. The path, um, again, is right along the train tracks. So right up on the property of the Kennesaw House, which is right in front of us right now. There it is. There is the Kennesaw House, also known as the Fletcher House, when it was deep in its shenanigans. And I think you guys can see the window with the light on. That is the window of James Andrews, and there is the mannequin. So that's the window that I noticed when I first started running this path. And again, it's hard to miss it. But I also, as I said in the video, got a really, really awful feeling in the pit of my stomach when I started to run by this this actual building, and more particularly, that window. I felt like there was something very demonic watching me. Now, right in front of me, there is the Marietta Square. And around this area, it's a cute little cobblestone area. You can see where some children have been drawing with sidewalk chalk. Marietta Square, besides the ghost and the shenanigans with the ghost stories, Marietta Square is very, very family friendly. There's a lot of things for kids to do. Of course, again, this area of the square is dedicated to preserving the history. Marietta Square is obviously very old for America. It's very old for America. And again, right in front of me, we're going back into the square. Lots of cobblestone streets still around in this area. Marietta Square, I'm so glad I've got the opportunity to run here early in the mornings and also film here early in the mornings because to try to film this during the day would almost be a disaster because it is so crowded. There's so many people. All these cafes are going to be packed during the day. The park in the middle where they would keep all the dead bodies is actually a place where a lot of kids play now. My nieces and nephews play, play over there all the time. My sister and brother-in-law actually live in Marietta. So this is a very awesome place to visit again if you care to visit. And there also are ghost tours, you guys. If you're ever in the Marietta area, they do have professional ghost tours that you can take and learn about all sorts of ghosts that haunt this beautiful part of Georgia.